Would you like to know more about how pharma manufacturing works? Every month, we bring you an insider conversation with our experts here at Lonza, with our partners and leaders in the industry. Hi, my name is Martina Hestericová, and this is A View On, a podcast brought to you by Lonza. And we are back after a short break, as I was recovering from COVID. Thankfully, my three vaccine doses protected me from severe illness, but I spent a few days isolating and in bed. And I wanted to ensure that I get my daily dose of vitamins and nutritional supplements. Surrounded by tablets and capsules of various sizes and colors, I started to wonder, are these colors only about product branding or could they serve another purpose as well? It turns out that the visual attributions of capsules are much, much more important. They play a vital role in patient compliance by ensuring unmistakable and precise drug product identification. Research also suggests that the color, shape, taste, and even the name of a tablet or a pill can have an effect on how patients feel about their medication. In addition, Connecting a certain design, be it shape, size, or color, to a certain product can provide additional means of differentiation, for instance, for the elderly population. And let's face it, it is also a great marketing tool. I mean, almost everyone on this planet is familiar with the term blue pill. To discuss the wonders of capsules, their design, and their colors, I'm joined today by Liliana Palangetic, Lonza's Associate Director of Heart Capsules, R&D. Hi, Liliana. Welcome to the podcast. How are you today? Hello. I'm, I'm fine. The weather is great. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic news. So I'm really excited that you came to our podcast to talk about this really interesting topic. I find it really fascinating that colors change the way how we perceive capsules. But maybe before we dive into that topic, could you summarize for us the general process of capsule manufacturing? Essentially, the manufacturing process for capsules is tip molding. This basically means that the final shape of two pieces that make the capsules is defined by specifically designed molds, which are then brought into, um, let's say, a bath of liquid formulation to pick up material that will after the drying process, finally give the final capsule form, shape, and composition. Uh, after the material is picked up, as mentioned, it goes into drying. Once sufficiently dried, the capsules are cut to the right length. Then the two pieces, body and cap, are joined. And after final inspections, they are packed and prepared for shipment to the customers. Does this mean the capsules need to be opened before they can be filled with the drug product? So the customer receives the capsules in so-called pre-closed position, so they are not completely closed. Uh, and then they put them on the filling machines where they are opened, filled, and then they are put in the final closed position. Hmm, okay, thanks for sharing that. Interesting. You mentioned that the tips are dipped into a certain mixture, I assume the mixture then hardens on the tip. What kind of materials are used to manufacture capsules to allow for this to happen? So these liquid formulations are typically water-based, and these can be solutions or dispersions of polymers. Uh, the main constituents of the capsules are polymers, which have different functionalities in the capsules. They can either help set the material to, to get the right shape and form, or they can be just forming the film because finally the capsule is a film that is formed in a certain shape. Um, and they can also play a role in the final functionality of the capsule, depending on how they solubilize um, in the final application. What happens to these materials when they enter the human body? Of course, all the materials used for capsule manufacturing have to be edible, of course, <laughs> otherwise we cannot use them. 
they have to comply with certain regulations for 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 the final application. So once ingested, uh, depending on the on the targeted application, they can dissolve either directly in the stomach or later on in the intestine or slowly release the product that is inside. Um, and these materials that make the capsule, some of them we can digest and some of them are basically fibers uh, that are not really digested by our body like any other fiber because, for example, there are cellulose derivatives which our bodies are not able to, to really digest so they are exerted as they are. Let's focus on the colors of capsules now. Where the capsules get their color from? Do you add them to the polymer mixture already at the liquid stage? Besides the, the polymers, we also add some colorants to the capsules to distinguish between different products, essentially. Historically, have capsules always been colorful? Mm, that is a good question. Capsules were actually developed a long time ago and they were really just containers that were supposed to hide whatever is it, whatever is inside and also to avoid the bad taste that at that time powders had but when exactly they became colorful i'm not really sure but it's an interesting question that i will for sure look up <laughs> what are drug and supplement manufacturers considering when picking up the color of their capsule um Often we see that customers really take a long time to decide on which color they want to use. And when they are deciding on the color, there is marketing aspect, meaning they want to have something that goes with their brand. However, they also want to have something that is different compared to other products and of their competitors. But they also take into account the effect the product will have on the consumers because consumers have certain expectations from the medications or supplements they are taking and the color should correspond to those. Uh, for example, some studies show that human visual system perceives color most effectively and even influences the perception of effectiveness of the medication. So the color in that aspect plays uh, an important role. And we see that the world is moving into more and more visual, where, let's say, the visual aspect is becoming really important. Um, and then the drug and supplement manufacturers, and probably more the supplement manufacturers, are also trying to use the colors to potentially uh, attract more customers who will buy their products. And then there is also a technical aspect that the customers have to take into account when choosing a color, because the colorant needs to be compatible with the fill, depending on what's the fill. There can be some interaction which can make the color unstable, but there are also fills that are sensitive to light potentially. And then the customers are choosing such colorants to protect, whether it's a given wavelength or a range of wavelengths to ensure that the fill is protected. And of course, there is still in some aspects required to really hide what is in the capsule, either because the, the look is not pleasant or it's, for example, in, in some clinical trials, when there are placebo and, and active components, they really want to make sure that um, what is in the, in the capsules, it's not seen by the patients. Ah, that's interesting. Okay. Are our customers considering sustainability and materials sourced from natural sources? There is a growing trend of consumers checking what is on the label of the products they are getting, either in food or supplements or cosmetics, it doesn't matter. And our industry is not an exception to that. At this stage, probably this is seen more with Nutra customers, but sustainability is increasing in importance across the board as well. So the trends are slowly creeping into the pharma industry too. Um, sometimes we are seeing that actually the sustainability or naturally sourced materials are actually the key factors Uh, that drive the choice of capsules the consumers are going to pick. And sometimes they are even looking at the colorants, which are not the main constituents of the of the product. You mentioned uh, the protective effect of capsules. If uh, whatever is being loaded into them is light sensitive, I wonder, are black or dark brown capsules used often in your experience? So black, there are some customers who like it, but 
it hasn't been so popular in the past. Actually, the hiding effect and, and light protection was mainly achieved by white. Ah, interesting. How do you achieve white? By the TiO2, which is a colorant that uh, has recently caused a lot of uh, discussions, especially in Europe. It's a colorant that has very specific properties, which allows very good light protection at very low quantities without strong impact on the capsule properties or, or stability or the process and so on. So finally, titanium dioxide was the main component to choose when light protection or hiding effect was needed for the capsules. And then you can combine it with different colorants and still achieve different colors. With the TiO2 getting banned in Europe, there are some customers who are turning more to iron oxides. So those are then red, I assume, right? Red, yellow, and to some extent black, but then mixed with other colors. So they are trying to achieve the, the hiding effect with that. So if titanium dioxide is now problematic in Europe, how else can you achieve the white color? <laughs> That's a really tricky question. And then <laughs> it raised a lot of discussions and technical difficulties, let's say. One of the problems is that if you look at the regulatory side of additives, There is only one alternative that is really approved as a colorant, which is calcium carbonate. And we have worked with the calcium carbonate and developed product called Vcaps Plus Opal. However, uh, calcium carbonate does not have the properties of titanium dioxide, meaning um, it's not able to hide or protect to the same extent at the same level. You have to add much more of the calcium carbonate in order to achieve the same light protection mm -hmm. or hiding uh, of the material. And this has a huge impact on the mechanical performance of the capsules, which really have to be robust to go through all the process. So there we had to really find a compromise, how much uh, hiding effect we can get, how much whiteness we can get, and still keep to the robustness of the capsules, mm -hmm. which then resulted in something which is semi-opaque and semi-white. <laughs> okay. And how is the market reacting to this semi-white alternative? A lot of customers understand the hurdles, so they, they accepted the solution. But we are also further exploring what are the options from technical point of view, but then also trying to see from regulatory point of view what can be done because it's currently very limited list. Yeah, that sounds like there are still lots of challenges that need resolving, huh? Is there no other alternative to achieving white capsules? As we saw that with calcium carbonate, it's it's really difficult and we really had to find a compromise between what we can achieve in terms of whiteness and keeping the, the strengths of the capsules. We also went out of the strict focus on what are the approved colorants um, and explored alternative options, which allowed us to, to get a very nice alternative for gelatin white capsules. This is really an alternative that for the time being shows a great potential and it really is able to compensate for the lack of TiO2. Wow, that's great. And if I may ask, what dye or color and or additive is used instead of TiO2 to, to, to ensure the whiteness? Well, we, we stayed on the list of additives, but these are not necessarily listed as additives, but rather like uh, pH adjusters or so soluble salts and so on. But combining the properties of the gelatin and the salt and the drying aspect, we managed to get really nice capsules. And how does the white color actually arise in these gelatin capsules? Well, basically the gelatin and the salts we are using don't really like each other once the drying process starts. Um, and as the drying is progressing, they start separating, which then leads to salt crystallization, which then results in this nice white color. Wow, that's really innovative. Cool. Okay. So that means that, in fact, we will have white capsules in a few years, it, even in Europe. Yeah, well, Thanks we're Lanza. definitely Sorry. looking that way, yes. <laughs> At least for gelatin. <laughs> But we, we continue working on uh, exploring other options for other polymers because for the time being, we don't know how, 
how big is uh, the TiO2 question going to become. And what colors can be achieved beyond white? Well, we have a large range of colors in our portfolio and um, our color lab is also working with customers when they come with new requests. So there is a standard palette, but there is also requests from uh, customers, which can be new colors. There are some limitations um, depending on the polymer that that we are targeting because the temperatures, the processing steps are differing and the colorants can be more or less sensitive to the formulation, uh, the temperature at which the formulation is, the process and, and so on. I think I've seen a couple of times also capsules with a sparkly effect. How is this achieved? These are colorants with uh, mica clay inside. They are not as much used in certain regions. They are a specific group of colorants, let's say, because there is really a range of different colorants and the effects they can achieve. Color perception and preference is very individual, right? I wonder, do you see color preference for certain regions in the world where it would be affected by local cultural preferences? And also, how about the difference between the pharmaceutical and nutraceutical sector? For pharma, I think the tendency is not so big, but when it comes to Nutra, you can see a bit that there is a trend what the customers prefer in certain regions. And um, for certain regions, the colors are really lively uh, and really strong. What types of dyes or pigments are used to achieve these colors? For black, you mentioned carbon. For blue, you mentioned a water-soluble compound. They are synthetic dyes, which most are generally soluble, or they can also be made insoluble. Then there are mineral colors, pigments, which are not soluble. They are just dispersible. There are colorants that are sourced from natural sources. And in the past few years, uh, Europe has developed guidance for coloring food stuff. So these are colorants that are extracted from food and the extraction is not selective. So the colorants contain also some of the nutrients that the actual food contains. And these are considered, let's say, the most clean colorants. So it's also uh, going with the trend of clean labels that um, the Nutra is going for in, in, in a lot of cases now. Could you give us an example of a food that is used for extracting these colors plus their nutrients? Uh, there are a lot of them. Um, there is, uh, for example, purple carrot. There is spirulina, uh, turmeric. Mm -hmm. uh, there is um, radish, beetroot, sweet potato, anything that basically has a color, um, any food that has color can be used. The difference is that some of these colorants are more or less sensitive to the processing, but basically anything you can see with color that we eat can be used for this purpose. Okay, my next trip to the grocery store will change the way how I think about <laughs> foods and veggies. Thank you. So now you've mentioned multiple times the topic of clean labels and sustainability is really a key consideration for Lonza in everything we do. How can we ensure that the materials that are used in capsule manufacturing are sustainable? All the industries moving into more sustainable, we are working with the, our suppliers to ensure as much as possible that it's a sustainable source. Some of the materials are extracted from natural. Some of the materials we also use are coming from fermentation, which are considered more sustainable sources. Are there any vegan-friendly options too? All our capsules, when possible, carry the given labels. So um, the customers just need to, to discuss with, with our commercial team what exactly they are looking for. But we have some vegan and vegetarian options as well. We have capsules based on um, hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, which is a cellulose derivative, and these capsules uh, can be used for vegetarian or vegan. And Liliana, could you explain how do you work with the customer? I mean, how do you determine 
which capsule would best fit the needs and preferences of their patients? We have a portfolio and then in the discussion with the customer, what are their applications, uh, what are their requirements and, and the targeted markets, etc. We define what is the best capsule for them. And then once that's defined, uh, the manufacturing site that can produce these capsules is defined. The exact form, shape and whatever it's specifically defined for specific customers. Colors play an important role in our lives, even though human color perception is based on elementary colors, right? So the achromatic black and white and the chromatic blue, red, green and yellow. Combinations of these colors can have a strong effect on our mood. Liliana, do you think we could change the perception of drug products if we use the right color? As an example, I assume anxiety medication would not be packaged in a red capsule, but instead use something calming like beige or even light green. We can see some of these trends definitely in pharma, but there is also a good portion of Nutra that is working with these supplements, but they are helping with, uh, like you mentioned, anxieties or, or sleep. It might evoke in them. And what we are also seeing is that uh, users of, of the, the drug products or supplements like to connect the color with the taste. So, for example, if you have something inside of the capsule that is really lemon-like, it, you, it, it's strange if you see a pink capsule. Well, at least for the brain, it's strange to see a pink capsule, for example, and have a lemon taste in the mouth. So that's also, I think, going with the trend that everything is getting more linked to the visual aspect. And I think there are also studies showing that also uh, our visual perception, even of our food, is very important on how our brain perceives it. Yeah, that's fascinating. Are there any other examples of how colors can imprint a certain information into our brains when it comes to capsules? When the customers are looking into picking the color, they are also having in mind their patients and that some of the patients are really distinguishing the drugs thanks to the size and, and the color and maybe even more the color. So most of the times, if you have a same drug in different dosages, they are coming with a different color to ensure that even though the name is the same, people can distinguish between the dosages. And also, I think this is mostly for elderly population that they typically have multiple drugs, medications that they need to take. And then remembering when exactly to take which one, it helps them with the colors. I, I have seen this with my uh, with my own grandfather. Yeah. That's an interesting take. I think with the aging population of the world, we will see this trend growing and growing, right? Because more and more people will be living longer and the color of capsules will be helping all of us in a few years from now. Yeah. And as medicine is learning more and more about our bodies, also the range of APIs that can help prolong this life is also extending, which then it brings the number of dosages that need to be taken up. So, yeah. Thanks for sharing your insights. As I mentioned, from now on, when I look at veggies and fruits, all I will be thinking about is how these colors can be applied to capsule manufacturing. So thanks for that. Now we have several capsules with different colors coming from, from food. You can link them then to, to your grocery <laughs> shopping. <laughs> Fantastic. And thanks really for your time and for coming to our podcast. Thank you. And that's all for today from A View On. We will be back next month with a story about de-risking, from building a house up to development and manufacturing of life-saving treatments. Did I pique your interest? Then make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Thanks and bye for now. <laughs>